All right, everybody, welcome back. Kyle Bazzi here, president of Benzinga.com with the Benzinga FinTech Awards. Up next, we have Open Folio and co-founder Hart Lamber. Hart, what's up, man? Hey, Kyle. How are you doing? Good, buddy, good. I know you're kicking it there in New York City. Um, let's get a little bit of background for people that don't know about Open Folio. Uh, Why did you guys start it, and where did the idea come from? Sure. I'm happy to, happy to chat. So, uh, Enon, my co-founder, and I have known each other since freshman year of college. Uh, we we're, we were actually uh, computer nerds, uh, computer science majors, went on and worked in finance um, for a while. Enon was at a hedge fund in midtown Manhattan, and I, I worked at Goldman Sachs for government bonds. And we realized, you know, a couple of years ago, we're sitting around and we're like, you know, we're not actually that great at managing our own money. And this is kind of hilarious because we're supposed to be the guys that, that are in the know. What we realized that we had access to that was actually really valuable uh, was the trading floor. And we mean that in a, in a concept, conceptual way. The trading floor was a place where I could turn to the guy beside me, I could turn to Enon and be like, hey, you know, what are you doing in your 401k? Hey, Kyle, what do you think of emerging markets or Facebook stock? And it was that open dialogue um, in that particular venue that we found such good use, uh, found so useful for our own investments. Openfolio, we think of as the first open investment community designed to bring some of those benefits to a much broader audience. All right, so we're going to dive into that and learn more about what you guys are trying to change uh, in the fintech space. But real quick, so how many employees do you guys have? You know, who's working on this thing? Are you guys funded? Are you looking for funding? Give us some of the, the details of the company. Sure, man. So we're, we're six people here in New York. Uh, Inor and I, a um, couple engineers uh, and a couple non-engineering hires. Uh, Inor and I still write a little code. Um, and we are funded. We raised a $1.8 million seed round uh, that closed in the summer. Um, and we're, we're just trucking. All right, it's awesome, dude. I love I love the fintech. There's so many companies coming into this space, uh, which we absolutely need. So let's get into it. So Openfolio, you say it's an open social network. You know, I'll be honest with you, Hart. I, I've heard this so many times uh, over the past several years here at Benzinga about the new social network for finance. Tell us what's different about Openfolio and what problem are you guys specifically going after? So it's funny when people use the word social network. We're not a place where you come here to make friends. That's that's not in that sense. I don't think I don't really. Um, we sort of lean against the, the social network phrase. What we are is we are a community where you share what your you share your contents of your portfolio, your holdings in percentage terms, not how much money you have, but the ideas and the contents of your portfolio. You share them with our community to see how you compare to groups of users around you. So the idea is that Kyle, you could go and sign up and say, hey, here's Kyle, here's what I got. Uh, I'm not sharing my performance, I'm only sharing the contents of my portfolio. Uh, but now I can see how I'm doing relative to men my age, to people that live in Detroit, to people that went to your college or university, people who work at your workplace. And the idea is that we're offering uh, the ability to, to benchmark yourself and have a little bit of transparency and peace of mind in terms of how you stack up and how you compare. A little bit of Detroit shout out. I like it. Uh, man after my own heart. Um, all right, so I, I get that. Now, uh, let me give you a little pushback and, and, and see what you think. So I, I always ask people for trades, what they're trading, what they like. Um, for instance, oil right now, you know, what, what kind of stocks or, or uh, opportunities are there there? Um, what gives somebody the incentive to actually share that kind of stuff and, and uh, put it on the platform? Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that. Like, uh, my, my reaction personally is that if, you know, at the individual level, if uh, we're all better off, by sharing our information with each other. You know, if any one of us had such great secret sauce on how the market was really working, well, you should go start a hedge fund. That's great. Um, but for us, for our community, you know, this immense belief that by trading tips with each other, um, we can actually do better together. And, you know, you know, my co-founder and I know that from our own experience. Um, in my old job at the, the Goldman Trading Desk, we were actually very open about what we were doing. And by being open about your thoughts and your ideas, it invites conversation. So, you know, you'll, you, Kyle, you'll call me up and be like, hey, I saw you were doing this, you were thinking this. What about this? And we enter into a dialogue that makes us both more thoughtful and more, both more informed uh, on our own views. So that, that's kind of my reaction. All right, so I log into the platform or a user logs in. What do they expect? Do they just start seeing people with the best performance by sector? Um, am I searching for people or just connecting with people I know? Uh, what, what do I expect when I log in? 
What, when, when you log in, you tell us a little bit about who you are via your social network, your Facebook or LinkedIn data, or you know, tell us where, what, how old you are and what industry you're in, that kind of information. And then we connect to your brokerage account um, and, uh, and, and show you, build a, uh, a financial profile for you. That financial profile, we then let you see how it compares to other groups of users around you. So Kyle, you'll log in, you'll see your profile, you'll see your own private performance and how you've done, and you'll be able to compare that to, uh, to men your age, to people from university, all those groups. And that's the core experience. From there, you can dig deeper into members of those groups or other people on our network and see the holdings in their portfolio. All right, very cool. Now, I, I was looking at the site earlier and saw some really cool stats that you sent along about just the differences of uh, you know my performance to, like you said, other men my age. Uh, I saw women perform better than men. I saw Gemini's uh, uh, were perform better than Capricorns. Um, how do you guys use that data, and and what is it useful for? Yeah, well, what we did, what I sent you earlier, was our our year in review. So we took the entire open volume data set, um, these seven point two million data points. And we crunch those into 11 interactive charts showing what uh, 2014 looked like for our investors, for the real investor. And the data behind it, there's, there's so many ways and angles to slice it, but it's, it's really pretty interesting. Um, some key takeaways that I think you and, and you know, your, your, your audience would like. Uh, you look at our data set, 24% um, of OpenFlow users uh, lost money uh, in 2014. We're actually down on the year when the S&P was up 13 odd percent. Um, uh, if you slice our data set in half, the top half actually beat the S&P on average, and the bottom half was actually down a little bit. And you can actually look into some of the qualities behind, uh, behind that information, really get a better sense for uh, lessons or insights we can learn from our community about how to be a better investor. Uh, and that's a, a whole other story that I'll, we're going to be writing about and blogging about. But, you know, at a high level, um, the users that generally underperformed on our platform were taking too much risk in single name stocks, had uh, portfolios that were actually on the volatile side, and also were under allocated, under invested in the market over the course of the year. So pretty interesting data that we've been able to pull out of that. Um, and then there's a whole other 11 stats that we, uh, we, we, we grabbed out of that data set uh, and, and published in that year end review. All right, we're going to run off on a little tangent here real quick. Something else I've been doing with the fintech companies um, cool. is asking you guys, what are your biggest obstacles? Uh, you know, in the, fin the financial space, there are these huge companies that, that you know, co completely flood the, the acquisition channels with a ton of money and their huge budgets. Um, there's so much competition out there. Uh, there's complexity, obviously, in a lot of the tools that we use. What have you guys seen in, in your short existence? Um, you know, you guys have been able to raise money. Uh, what lessons can we take away from what you've done right and what you've done wrong? So I think you, know, you alluded to it, acquisition um, in the financial services space is hard. Um, why? Well, finance isn't usually considered that sexy. It's, it's not a game. Um, and the vertical is expensive because of the marketing budgets of, of a lot of the big players out there. Um, you know, what we have been focused on is learning how we can take our own product and take open portfolio and use our own differentiating factors to help create our own audience. So for us, a lot of our success has been around our content, around the data that we are actually creating, and sharing those insights back with our users to start a conversation and engage them um, with, with OpenFolio. So, so that's, been a, a, that's been working for us. Um, and then, you know, from that, it's just a matter of, of lots of blood, sweat, and tears uh, of building a business, um, but it's been a lot of fun. All right, let's go, jump back into the, uh, the awards. Uh, what is your guys' business model? So our business model really totally focused on growing our user base, growing our community. Again, relating back to, to the data set, the more users we have, the more um, information, the more insight our community is providing to the, to the network. And so our, our kind of goal one, two, three, and four right now is just growing, um, growing our community, growing our user base, and taking those insights and distilling them back to our users. In the future, we'll look to, uh, to use our community um, to offer some sort of subscription service, uh, most likely in the advice space, where we'll ask users who are heavily engaged with OpenFlow and who value um, what we're doing, uh, we'll offer them a premium product with um, you know, uh, added insights and advice. 
All right, you're growing the crowd, so give us some success metrics, whether it's traffic, you know, logged in users or whatever. How do you guys track success? And um, you know, since you guys existed, how how has the growth been? Um, sure. I mean, uh, success. We we found the engagement with our product to be really high, so we're really happy about that. Um, we've got a, a, a way higher percentage of users that actually uh, come back to the to, this, to the link accounts, share, and open up their portfolio. You know, first question we got asked when we uh, left our old jobs, our bosses were like, "Guys, no one's going to share this information. No one's going to share their portfolios." Um, the the answer to that, and we've got the data and the growth to prove it. Is that yeah they are um, so that that's always been super exciting for us. Um, the engagement, particularly in our iPhone app, the uh, the daily active users and the general uh, engagement with our actual application has been really really strong, uh, really from the get go. So we feel uh, we feel really happy about that. And then on the growth, um, you know that's our primary objective right now. And uh, you know without getting into like nitty gritty numbers, I'm just we're we're really excited with. Um, with our recent successes, and excited for sort of the, the type of traction and um, qualitative feedback we're getting from the year in review um, and other shareable content that we've been producing. All right, if uh, if you don't make it in finance, you got a uh, you got a role somewhere in politics for you. I like the uh, the politically corrected answer. All right, cool, man. We uh, this is great stuff. I love seeing companies like OpenFolio. Um, what you guys are trying to do, the platform's super simple, nice and clean. Give us the thirty second elevator pitch at the end. We, I always ask in these interviews for you to tell us in thirty seconds or less why you deserve to win the Benzinga FinTech Awards for one of the most innovative products that are trying to help us create wealth in the markets. Uh, sure, man. I mean, um, you know, catch me a little off guard, but on uh, on why we want to win the, the the fintech awards. I mean, we think OpenFolio is this open investment community. Our promise to our user base is that we, our, our open community will guide you to better investment decisions. Um, for us, that's a big vision and big dream. Uh, we want to take the data and the insights of our collective, offer them back to our users, help put them on the right investment track, and offer peace of mind. Um, and, and kind of confidence that they're doing the right things. And for us, you know, it's it's equally about helping you make money as it is about helping you not not make mistakes, not fall into pit holes, or 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 do the things that are, are going to cost you. And uh, we found a lot of success with our user base around that kind of message. So we want to keep running with it. Hart Lambert, co-founder of OpenFolio. Hart, thanks a lot for joining, man. Thanks, Kyle. All right, you can go check out OpenFolio on BenzingaFintechAwards.com. Go see more from the other 115 companies that applied to show us how they're helping innovate the space, finance, and technology to help you create wealth in the markets. Till next time, this is Kyle Bazzi, president of Benzinga.com for the Benzinga FinTech Awards. Thanks for joining.